Ah, Destin. Tisk, tisk, tisk. You got something wrong again, Destin. <laughs> Uh, so, if anybody has seen the most recent Smarter Every Day video where he's talking about making uh, Prince Rupert's drops and putting them inside of glass, so they're made out of glass, but putting them inside of glass, which was a really cool video, and I did quite like it, but unfortunately he uh, got something wrong, and I would like to explain a subtlety, because um, he said that glass when it you know quote unquote melts or you know glass when it softens that that was a second order phase transition and that's not true okay glass does not undergo a second order phase transition when it softens it undergoes a glass transition which isn't a phase transition at all um a second order phase transition is something different and i'm going to try to explain what it is because, well, okay. People learn in school about three different phases of matter, right? Solids, liquids, and gases. And you probably learn something like this, which is correct, that solids are a, you know, regular array of atoms where they're all held together. And liquids are chaotic disordered jumbles of atoms where they're not held together in a regular pattern but they're relatively close together in distance and then gases are also disordered but with large distances between the atoms or molecules and you know everybody learns that gases and liquids flow solids do not and liquids are incompressible gases are compressible and solids are also incompressible. All great stuff. But there's a few subtleties. So, one is people will sometimes say that plasma is a, you know, fourth state of matter. And I'm fine with them calling it a fourth state of matter because, um, the, the that 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 specific f terminology does not uh, violate how things ought to be referred to because state isn't necessarily as well defined a thing. Like a phase of matter is a very specific thing, and thermodynamics more so than any other field of physics. You have to be very, very careful about terminology, which well, thermodynamics isn't a, a field of physics in the sense of like being a, a particular area of, of research, but, you know, an, an, an area of, of, of thought. Um, and so I'm a condensed matter physicist, and we're one of the only sort of uh, types of physicist that really thinks about thermodynamics in any detail. And, and phases of matter are our bread and butter. Like, we are very concerned with exactly what does and doesn't count as a phase of matter. And plasma doesn't count as a phase of matter. It, it, you could call it a state, and I'm fine with that, but plasmas are really just gases that are ionized. And the fact that they're ionized does change some of their properties. But the crucial thing is that as you increase the temperature of a gas, the ionization fraction, right, the, the percentage of the atoms in the gas that have been ionized and released an electron, it increases smoothly and continuously as you increase the temperature. And it's the same thing with a glass, right? There is no specific temperature where you have solid glass and molten glass coexisting. It's just as you get glass hotter and hotter, it gets goopier and goopier and starts to flow more and more. And that's because glass isn't, it's not, it's not, a, it's never really a solid, right? It's, it's in some sense always a liquid. Um, that's not quite true either, though. It's something else called an amorphous solid. And I think uh, Smarter Everyday already knows that, where it's like this, where you have these little, you have little sort of clumps of atoms, um, but they're never forming a, 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 
uh, repeating pattern like the solid. They don't form a, an actual crystal. Uh, they just get all sort of stuck together, but in a completely random, disorganized fashion. And glass is amorphous silicon dioxide. That's what glass is. And you can actually make glasses out of things other than silicon dioxide. It's just really difficult. Uh, there's actually something called uh, metallic glasses, which is where you take a metal and you quench it really, really fast. And I mean really insanely fast, like faster, like much, 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 much fast. Like if you see the, the, you know, the awesome videos of people, you know, taking some forged steel and quenching it in, in uh, oil or in water, like that, that, that is nowhere near fast enough. You have to really, really, you have to take a fairly small amount of metal and cool it down from its molten state very, very quickly. Um, and that's because of the properties of metal. Uh, versus silicon dioxide, if you just melt it and then cool it down at regular temperatures and pressures, it will form an amorphous. Uh, it will form. It will become amorphous. It will become an amorphous, you know, quote unquote, solid, uh, even though it's not a solid in the sense of being crystalline. Versus, by contrast, uh, if you want to make something like this, this is. I wish I had a better piece of quartz. This is a, a geode that I happen to have on hand, and. You know, quartz does. Quartz is crystalline silicon dioxide, and quartz can only form if you take silicon dioxide and cool it down very, very, very slowly, uh, which can happen on you know in geologic processes. And so, it requires a you know it, it's kind of you know metals are very easy to make into crystalline solids, right? As are a lot of other things. Um, and very difficult to make into uh, amorphous, glassy materials. Uh, whereas by contrast, silicon dioxide, which is what we make typical, like, regular just glass out of, is very easy to make into an amorphous solid and very difficult to make into a crystalline solid. Um, and so it it's a very subtle distinction, but glasses never really form a solid in that sense. They form an amorphous, quote-unquote, solid, but they don't form a crystal. And so then that begs the question, okay, if that's not a second-order phase transition, what is? You know, and, well, I'm glad you asked. Um, an amorphous solid doesn't undergo a second-order phase transition. It never undergoes a phase transition. It's, in some sense, still in the liquid state. Um, so how do you undergo a second order phase transition? Well, here's a typical phase diagram for some stuff. Uh, this is, you know, it could be anything, but so we have a gas, a gaseous state, which happens at low pressures and high temperatures. We have the solid state, which exists at high pressures and, and, uh, low temperatures. And then we have a liquid state that exists kind of in between. Uh, but then notice these uh, these dashed these dashed lines I have over here in this area called the supercritical fluid that I have labeled, and so this is where it's like tisk 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 Destin, uh, you know the Destin the guy from Smarter Every Day he should know better, and the reason he should know better is that he is uh, he has a background as a mechanical engineer and mechanical engineers actually take um, more thermodynamics classes than um, physicists do. Uh, and in fact, uh, you know, a mechanical engineer that specializes in a thermodynamics heavy area, like if you go into, you know, thermo, if you, well, just go into a, you know, thermodynamics, fluid dynamics type specialization, rather than more into like a mechanical design type specialization or a mechatronics type specialization, then you will probably learn more thermodynamics as a mechanical engineer than most physicists, aka astrophysicists and particle physicists and plasma physicists, ever actually learn. Uh, condensed matter physics, we have to learn a lot of thermodynamics, or should learn a lot of thermodynamics, because well, a lot of what we do is explore exotic phases of matter. Um, but so, the second order phase transition is something that I actually originally learned about in a mechanical engineering class. Because I started out life as a mechanical mechanical and aerospace engineering major before switching into physics, and in the course of that, I learned that 
when you go between liquid, gas, sol whenever you cross one of these solid lines, so from gas to solid, gas to liquid, uh, or liquid to solid, that is a first order phase transition. And first order phase transitions are defined by having what's called a latent heat, which means that it takes energy even at even once you reach the boundary between the phases, it takes some energy to go from one phase to another. Okay, a second order phase transition, it does not actually. T there is no latent heat of fusion, right? When you cross uh, this line up, one of these dashed lines up here into the supercritical fluid, you don't get a latent heat of vaporization. And for that reason, the the difference between a liquid and and a gas is actually a, not necessarily that well defined. And I'm trying not to get too in depth here, but there's something called an order parameter. And that's how we condensed matter physicists actually think about phase transitions is in terms of order parameters. And so remember, I was talking about how glass is a disordered material, an amorphous solid versus um, something like a, a, a solid, eh. Something like a solid where there's a regular pattern, you know, this regular, you know, you can see exact, you know, given where one at, given where one atom is in this pattern, you know exactly where the next one is, right? It's a, it's a regular predictable repeating pattern that is ordered versus something like a liquid is disordered. And so we talk about things called order parameters that represent sort of the, the basic, most basic way to think about it is like, how predictable the microscopic details of a system are. That's only sort of right, but for purposes of liquids and solids, that's the best way to explain it, right? Is that, you know, you could imagine this is a, this is a very highly ordered, right? You know, everything is very predictable and in the right spot. And this is very disordered, right? Everything is kind of chaotic and unpredictable and just kind of randomly jumbling around. And, so in condensed matter physics, we think about things like uh, magnets. And so um, I'm going to show you in just a second how when you heat up something that's magnetized, it actually loses its magnetization. And that is a proper second order phase transition, just like crossing through this dashed line right here, right? Like if you have some, if you have a gas, or, or, uh, you know, and you heat it up, or, or you heat it up to really, really high temperatures, and then you raise its pressure until it crosses this line, you will not get uh, any latent heat of vaporization, but you will get a phase trans. You will get a phase transition, and it will it will be a second order phase transition. Um, so. Let me show you those clips of demagnetizing something real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and magnetize this Allen wrench by rubbing it on another magnet. And then let's attach it to this metal hammer. Then let's light our handy dandy blowtorch so that we can demagnetize it. And here we go. So watch how I'm heating up that Allen wrench that I magnetized and eventually it'll reach, oh, there we go. So what's going on there actually is a second order phase transition, right? There's no latent heat of fusion. It's just, it heats up, it heats up, and then whoosh, no more magnetization. And then the little Allen wrench falls off the hammer. So why do we call it a second order phase transition and why did Destin get confused? So. I, I, it's, it's hard to speculate what he does and doesn't remember from his undergraduate education, which I should say, I too have been guilty of like forgetting basic stuff that I learned in a, in classes that I really should remember. In fact, one time my advisor in grad school got mad at me. I mean, not like mad, mad, but he made fun of me because I forgot to include the zero point energy when I was analyzing some Landau levels, which is just a uh, basic little thing with, I mean, it's, you know, basic quote unquote quantum mechanics. Um, but nevertheless, it was a, a silly mistake for me to have made. And it, so it, it happens all the time. Um, uh, so I'm not judging, but I am gonna, you know, state the, the correct facts here. And so 
I've, I've written down here. So this is why we call it first and sort second order phase transition. So uh, first order means that there's a discontinuity. So see, there's this jump in the first derivative of the free energy. So that's a lot of words, right? Um, so note that free energy is not the same as just energy, right? So just energy would be this term U, which is the internal energy of the system. And so the this is called what's called the Gibbs free energy, which is the internal energy plus pressure times volume, and this is crucial, minus temperature times entropy, right? And so the, uh, the latent heat of fusion will be exactly equal to the temperature times the change in entropy between the lower and uh, higher entropy phase and the, oh, you know, minus the, the pressure times volume um, to account for the fact that we do this in typically, anyways, <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to explain in too much detail why you need the pressure volume. But anyways, it's just important to note that that, that uh, it's it's which which derivative of the free energy is discontinuous right so a first order phase transition the the adding that adding these other two terms makes G continuous rather than discontinuous at the phase transition but notice the slope of G with respect to temperature abruptly changes and so there's a discontinuity in the first derivative and then the second derivative would actually be infinite at that point versus a second order phase transition there's more like this inflection point at the critical temperature at the at the where the phase transition happens and then the first derivative uh, has a kink but not any discontinuity and the second derivative has a discontinuity and so it turns out most phase transitions are second order phase transitions. And so the reason I think Destin probably got confused is that he probably remembered this idea that there is such a thing as a second order phase transition. And he remembered that there's no latent heat of fusion uh, or that there's just no latent heat involved in a second order phase transition, which is true. But he forgot what that really meant or maybe he never properly understood it because it looks tantalizingly like a glass transition is a second order phase transition but it's not right it looks like oh it's this smooth continuous thing right but 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 second order phase transitions are still abrupt in fact in some sense they're actually more abrupt right because when you do a first order transition you heat something up you heat something up and then you've got to pause at the phase transition temperature while you pump in the extra latent heat uh, and then you keep going versus a second order transition, you hit the transition point and then just, you know, boom, all of a sudden, just like the magnet losing its magnetization, you're all of a sudden uh, at the other side of the phase boundary. And so, but I, I could see where you could get confused though and think, oh yeah, there's no latent heat of fusion. So therefore it smooths everything out. And uh, no, 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 phase transitions are still abrupt and glass transitions are not phase transitions at all. They are smooth, continuous phenomena um, where there is no discontinuity in any derivative of the free energy, no matter how, how high. Because uh, you can also have third, fourth, fifth, whatever uh, order phase transitions. Uh, it just, you know, depending if it's the third derivative, fourth derivative, fifth derivative, whatever, of free energy that is discontinuous. Generally, most things of interest are second order phase transitions. So anyways, I, you know, I still think Destin's content is pretty good. I thought the rest of that video was really, really cool seeing him work with those artists and uh, seeing the tremendous respect that he had for their expertise. Um, unfortunately, he seems to have forgotten a, a little bit of his own education, but, um, well, maybe I can uh, interject here and uh, correct that a little bit. And I may have gotten something wrong myself, uh, which would be kind of ironic, wouldn't it? But uh, only behooves me to, to stay humble and, uh, yeah, anyways. I hope anybody watching this got uh, a little bit smarter or more accurately, a little bit more informed today. Thanks for watching. Bye.